everyone. Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about yearbooks and other photo collections. A lot of the content on Ancestry.com is what we call name-based, so it's indexed and you can actually search it. But some of the collections are not name-based. They're mostly location-based um, or formatted in some other fashion. And so you can't search and ever find those results, and that's the majority of our photo collection. Yearbooks fall kind of somewhere in between. The yearbooks have been indexed, but they've been indexed via OCR, which is optical character recognition, meaning a computer has read the page and tried to pick out the names. And with our yearbook collections, we've gotten really, really good at this kind of technology, but there are still some things um, that you can do to make sure that you're finding what it is that you're looking for. So today we're going to spend a little bit of time with the yearbooks. We're going to look at a few of our other photo collections. I'll show you how to search and how to browse. So let's dive in. For those of you who are new to Ancestry.com, the first thing you're going to need to know is how to find these kind of records. Again, they're not going to necessarily always surface in search. So the best thing that you can do is to go to the card catalog. The card catalog is the very last option under your search menu on Ancestry.com. Then when you get there, you're going to want to filter that list of 31,000 databases down to the ones that are pertinent to what it is that you're looking for. In this case, it's going to be the collection type of pictures. And then once you find the database that you're looking for, you can either search it or browse it. And I'll show you how to do that um, to find what it is that you're searching for. So let's come over here to the website. Again, for those of you who don't know where the card catalog is, you're going to find it here under search. Scroll down to card catalog. Go ahead and click on that. Let's make my screen a little bigger for you. Well, a little more space anyway. <laughs> okay, the collection, the filter collections is over here on the left hand side. You'll see we have the category named pictures. So we're going to go from 31,000 databases with just one click down to 34 databases. But these 34 databases have millions of records and images in them. The first, of course, is going to be the, year, the U.S. School Yearbooks Collection. Now, one of the first questions that I want to answer before you even ask it has to do with why there are not yearbooks for other countries. Um, yearbooks are kind of uniquely a U.S. phenomenon. <laughs> um, as we started investigating other countries, Historically, they did not um, do yearbooks in high schools and colleges. Now, that has changed some in the 20th, late 20th and early 21st century here, but um, of course then those things are not out of copyright. And so, so as we look historically, um, the, year, the yearbooks are only available in the United States. You'll notice here we have 211 million records contained in this yearbook collection. So chances of you finding someone that you know, maybe even yourself, are pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at this collection. Let me just use my grandfather as an example here. So my grandfather, his name officially is Fred, but sometimes he's listed as Frederick in some records. So I've gone ahead and marked um, put his surname in, or his given name in there with an asterisk. That's a wild card. I've marked everything exact just as a first search to see what comes up. Um, I also know that he was living in California. I'm fairly certain he was living in Los Angeles, but I'm just going to mark the state exact. And then I'm going to go ahead and click search. And I come up with 10 search results for people whose names start with Fred and whose last names are Cowan and who are living or going to school in California. If I scroll down this list, I see here two entries for University High School in Los Angeles in 1940. Now, I'm not exactly certain where my grandfather went to school, but in 1940, he would have been 18 years old, so likely a senior. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And that takes me to the record page, so I can see what information here has been um, indexed. Now, one of the things that we've done on Ancestry.com, because these particular records are not, um, because all they list is a name, they don't list an age. But if we attach an age to it, chances of it showing up in search are that much higher. So we've actually estimated a birth year, and we've given kind of an average. Uh, where we have no idea. So if it's a high school, 
then um, I think our estimate is, is 16 years old, that they're, they're, some, they're about 16. They could be 18, they could be 14, but they're about 16 years old if they're in high school. And then we've done the same thing for colleges. We say they're about 20 years old. So they could be 18, they could be 22 or 23, but um, we're giving that estimate so that we can calculate an approximate birth year so that these can surface better when you search. So um, this happens to be a high school yearbook, but the name of the high school is university. And so um, our algorithm has assumed, just because that's the first word there, that this is a college yearbook and assigned the age of 20. So it skews a little bit different, but, but it still came up. I still got the answer, and that's the important thing. And that's our goal, is to, is to help you find the record that you're looking for. So here is the image, and I'm going to actually zoom in on this image a little bit. I can see it's a, a page of class photos, um, or of um, senior photos. Their names are listed in columns down each side of the page. And as I scroll down here to my grandfather, there is my grandfather in all his 18-year-old cuteness um, in a photo that I've never seen before I started looking through these. Um, Presumably it's his senior photo. As I look at some of these people next to him, some of his classmates are in uniform. So very likely that they were 18 years old. Um, he did not enter the service until 1941, I think, actually. So he hadn't yet entered the service for World War II. But some of his classmates are in uniform. I could actually go back. He's in the seas. And so I could go back a couple of images here and see if I could figure out if for sure if this is a list of senior photos. And that would give me a little bit more information about what it is that I'm looking at. Um, there's some information about cadets. I could, just, I could just look through this yearbook image by image like I would um, if I had the actual book in hand. As a matter of fact, if I go back to the beginning of the book here, I can scroll through and I can learn more about what his school was like and, and what the activities of the year were, who some of his teachers may have been. Um, all of that information is going to be here in this yearbook so that I can get a feel for what that particular year of my grandfather's life was like. Here's an actual picture of the high school, the front of the school, so that I can see what it looked like then. If I want to get really creative, I could come over here to, Ma to Google Maps. I could type in University High School in Los Angeles. It's going to show me where on a map that University High School is. Now, I've already found my grandfather in the 1940 census at home with his parents, and I know where they were living. And so I could compare, you know, I could look for that address here on the map and compare how far away it was from where he went to school. Maybe even look at um, possible routes that he could have taken if he was walking or driving himself to school. I can also use this little orange man right here, and I can drag it right down here onto Texas Avenue, and I can see um, what the school looks like today. Now, this oh, somehow I landed myself on the back of the back side of the school. If I come up um, this street just a little ways, I'm going to come around the side of the school. And this is the, the the Google cars that drive around taking photos of things. Now I can kind of zoom over here this way, maybe zoom in a little bit more here, and now I can see what the school looks like today. Um, the fact that it's still standing, I could maybe even do a screen capture to capture this image, and in my own personal family history have an image, have this image from the yearbook and this image from today side by side and show, you know, for those who come after, here's what the high school looked like in 1940 when my grandfather attended there, here's what it looks like today. If that building wasn't still standing, I could still take a screen capture of what's there today so that those who come after will have a vision of what the area looks like or what may have happened. So um, there's lots of different things you can do with yearbooks. For some of you, this may not be a big deal, but for some of us, we love this kind of thing. For me, personally, I'm um, not just into filling in names and dates on the sheets. I want to come to know these people. I don't want to just fill in the blank about when they were born and when they died, but I want to see life through their eyes and understand a little bit more about the time and the place that they were living and um, maybe who they associated with or what circumstances led them to make some choices that they made. The, the more I come to know about them, the closer I feel to them and the more I can understand them and their lives. 
So go in and play with yearbooks. If you want to get really crazy, you can start with yourself and just see what comes up. Um, but chances are all of you are going to find some relative in this collection. Now, when we talk about browsing a collection, let me just show you what that means because that's going to become really important here in just a minute when we look at a few of the other photo collections. Whenever there are images attached to any database on Ancestry.com, we also provide what we call a browse or an ability for you to, to look through the records without doing a search. It's always going to be on the right hand side. In this case, because yearbooks get a lot of traction and publicity, um, there's, there's some information about our celebrity yearbook um, promotion and who we found, what famous people we found in those those yearbooks and it's kind of amusing <laughs> um, it's actually really amusing but just below that is where you're gonna find the browse box so in this case for example I can come down here let's reset that I can come down here and I can say okay you know my parents went to school in California um, my mom grew up in Long Beach California and so I'm gonna check here and then see um, she went to David Starr Jordan High School. They've got 1956 available. She was a little young that year. And then it looks like they've also got 51, 52, 53, 65. Um, she was in high school in 1965. And so I can click on that. And again, then I'm just using these image arrows over here to go image by image through this particular yearbook to see if I can, to, again, to see if I can find something that might not have been caught uh, by the OCR indexing machines, but also to get a feel for what it looked like when she went to school there, um, what some of the activities were of the time. Uh, my mom is still living, so I could maybe take this to her and have her go through it. And my guess is, just knowing the way that my mom's memory works, which is really, really well, uh, as we w if we were to go through this, there would be stories for days as she saw pictures and faces of people that she knew and loved and had memories of. Now, one of the things you may be noticing as I'm going image by image through this particular yearbook is that there are... Um, it's, it is an actual yearbook <laughs> for some guy named Bill, and people have signed it. Uh, not all of our yearbooks are that way. Some of them came to us um, through various avenues where they were unused yearbooks, but a lot of them are used yearbooks. Um, the people have either passed away or the yearbooks ended up in flea markets or wherever, and people collect them, and then we have obtained those and digitized those. So another reason for going through these, what would be really amusing to me if I was to go page by page through this yearbook would be to find out that my mom or my aunt, her older sister, who also went to school there at the time, um, had known this guy Bill and had actually signed his yearbook. What a scream that would be to be able to take that to them and say, look, do you remember writing this? Or, or look at how silly this was. Or what did you mean when you said this? So it's just a delightful way to help encourage family stories, to help see into the lives of um, your friends and your relatives. And um, some people have mentioned one of the uses that they have for these yearbooks. Um, a lot of records for the 1900s, particularly the latter half, um, the, you know, 1950 through 2000, are still considered still considered private. They're, they're still protected by privacy laws. And, and so it's a little bit difficult sometimes to get information about people who were living from 1950 to 2000. And the yearbook collection, because they're not protected by privacy, they have, um, you have a, not, an opportunity to find cousins that may have been lost to see where they ended up going to school. You can search for, you know, I could search for people with just this, um, let's actually do this, just this last name living in this particular place, especially if it's an uncommon last name, there's only 22 that show up. And then I could go through these and I could start to make connections between siblings um, or, again, those cousins that you may have lost touch with or not known where they ended up after they moved away. So yearbook collection, really a fun, fun resource. I'll just tell you one brief story. Uh, you may have heard me share this story before. I was actually at a conference, uh, oh, probably about a year or so, year and a half ago. And this man came up to me and he said, I want you to find me in your databases. 
and he was not happy to be at this conference. Apparently his wife had, had made him come and she was having a grand old time and he was just more than a little bit bored. And so he said, find me in your databases. And I said, well, sir, it would be easier to find somebody um, that lived in 1930 at the time the 1940 census was not out. And I said, so, we're, so why don't we look for one of your parents and see if we can find them. And he said, no, I want you to find me. And I said, well, likely the only thing we're going to find for you is going to be um, in our public records index database. Maybe a list of the last few addresses you lived at where you were registered to vote um, or paid taxes. And he said, he said, well, let's do it. I want to find me. And so we did a quick search, and we pulled up a yearbook photo. And it was a, a, a junior high band photo of him. And he got so excited. I, he squealed literally. He squealed like a little girl. He was so excited. And he went and got his wife. And I mean, just was thrilled to see this picture. As the story was told, um, come to find out that when he was in high school, his parents had had a house fire. And they had lost um, all of their, their photos and their family memories in that tragic fire. And he had never seen that photo since, since he had finished school that year. It had been in a box that had been destroyed. And so he was so excited to have not just that photo of himself, but to be able to go through that book page by page and find some of those special memories. So lots of uses for your books. Uh, hopefully you'll find a use for them in your research or as you start telling family stories. Let's look just for the last few minutes. We have a couple of other photo collections just so you're aware of what they are. So we do have our public member photos, 75 million of them. These are photos and documents that our users have uploaded to their own trees. So you can search those independent of the trees. Then we have private mo member photos. There are about 25 million of those. Um, of course, you have to ask permission to see um, those, but we can tell you if you can, you can search them and we can tell you if they have possible, if there are possible connections for you. One of our uh, most popular image collections is our passenger ships. So the Library of Congress has provided us with a collection of um, photos and paintings and drawings and sketches of any ship that they could get their hands on that came into uh, port into the United States in particular. And so you can come in here and you can say, well, I know my ancestor came over um, on the ship Demosthenes and they came in 1922, and so you can come and see an image of that specific ship that they came over on. There's something really meaningful to me about being able to, sorry, I'm, I'm going to get a little emotional, about being able to just look at this particular image, about being able to see exactly what they saw um, as they went to port and what they saw um, as they got on board that ship and left everything behind and sailed across an ocean which at the time was not without its risks and, um, and then arrived in, in this new land. And so these ship photos, just for me, really tell an important part of the story of my immigrant ancestors. That's why I happen to love this particular collection. So you can find that again in the card catalog, Passenger Ships and Images. If you know the name of the ship, you can just search for it. You'll notice there is a search box, um, so you could put it into the, this ship name field, or as I said, you can just browse directly to it. One of the reasons I would recommend browsing to the name of the ship is because sometimes there are ships that have there are multiple ships with the same name that sail different time periods. And so this just allows you to look and see, oh, this is the ship I want, not the one that was sailing, you know, in 1867 or, or however. So that's a, that's a great way to get, get a hold of those images. Okay, a couple of other fun things. This is going to seem silly to some of you, but I just love this. We have the historic catalogs of Sears and Roebuck from 1896 to 1993. So almost 100 years of Sears catalogs we have digitized, including the ever-coveted, much-anticipated holiday edition of the, of the catalog. So I have talked to my mom about this, and she told me stories about her mom about this. So my grandmother was actually born in Arkansas in this tiny little town, and it was very isolated and, um, you know, up in the mountains. And, 
And the catalog was a big deal because for them, it was part of a view into the outside world. Um, you know, the children would wait for the Sears catalog and then circle the things that they wanted. There were people who ordered homes, entire houses, out of the Sears catalog. <laughs> so they were prefab homes that you could order that were sent to you. <laughs> um, just There are just really cool things in here. So again, there is, some, there is a search box if you want to look for a particular year um, or a particular time of year, depending on which catalog you're interested in. But the, use this browse box over here. You can come over here and you can say, okay, you know what? In 1927, when my grandmother was five years old, what did the fall catalog look like? What did she see as a five-year-old little girl when that catalog came and her and her brothers and sisters started going through it page by page to see you know, the exciting things that they were going to see? Uh, and then you start to get, a, again, you start to get a feel for life through their eyes. You'll see things about how much things cost, $27.50 for a fur coat. <laughs> um, you'll see things, uh, you'll see advertising things that just will make you chuckle. You'll see styles and fashions of the day. And again, any of these you can use in your personal family history. If, uh, if you want to just give it a little bit more flavor or a little bit more color, um, make it a little bit more interesting for those who might not be into genealogy research, but who would love to know more about family history, love to know more about, you know, the stories of the time and the place and the people. Remember, I mean, there's a thousand images in this particular catalog, and you can go through them one at a time, but you can also jump around. So I can jump ahead to image 300 or image 50, 520, um, and I can just work my way through the catalog that way. Again, very interesting to see life as they saw it. Um, the things that they saw, the things, how much things cost, all of that. I just find it, I just find it immensely fascinating. So that's the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Um, we are out of time, so I'm not going to go one by one through some of the rest of these. I just do want to point out a couple of things. The Library of Congress has provided us with um, over a half a million images that cover 1840 to 2000. Those images cover everything from um, city streets to um, historic moments to battlefields, any, anything that the Library of Congress has collected in their photo collection. There are people, but mostly it's a lot of things. These are all public domain photos, which means they are not under copyright and you can use them. And we encourage you to use them, especially in your family history. We have some headstone photos, about uh, not quite 100,000 of them, that are excellent. There are photos of soldiers, um, some German coats of arms, uh, there's this whole collection of professional baseball players. If you have one of those in your family, might be worth checking out. And then the final thing I want to point out today is our postcard collection. We have, we have this immense postcard collection. We've broken it down by country. So there's the U.S. postcard collection, United Kingdom and Ireland, Canada, Sweden, France, Italy. So just look for the country or filter to the location that you're interested in. And again, you can search by... Um, you can search by location. These are not about people, they're about places. So I could come in here and I could say, you know, I want to see um, Hannibal, Missouri. And so I'm going to click on Hannibal, Missouri, and I'm going to click search. And now what it comes up with is our 61 postcards uh, that show the Huck Finn Museum, the home of Huck Finn, and Main Street, and the high school, and the hospital. And if my family was from this place, now again, now I'm seeing what they saw through their eyes a little bit. A lot of these are very historic. Um, they could be decades old. Some of them are 100 years old or older. Uh, if there's a particular church that I know that my family worshiped at, maybe it's gonna show up here. If, you know, if they stayed in a hotel or used the library or um, fished on the river, any of that, right? There's all of these images of that place. 
And again, it just gives more flavor and color and um, life to the family history stories that we're collecting and that we are telling. And so please use these uh, for those purposes. Use these to just um, really not just see them for yourself, but as you share these things with your family and include them in your family history to help um, give them give them that vim, that image or that visual of the lives that your the lives that your ancestor lived. So that is how we use the image collections. Again, you're going to find it in the card catalog under search. You're going to click on pictures to filter it down to those 30 some odd databases that contain images and then you can either search or browse each collection to find the things that you're looking for to help you not just tell your family story better but in many cases discover more about your family story for yourself. That's all we have time for today. If you have suggestions for topics that you'd like to see covered in future broadcasts, please, please send me an email at ask at ancestry.com. I am putting together the December calendar right now, um, but we'll take those suggestions at any time. And then you can check on the ancestry.com Facebook page, click on the events tab. You should see a list of all future topics, dates, and times so that you can RSVP to join us next time. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.